Hi, I'm John Walsh. Good parents make it a point to know where their kids are, who they're with, and what they're doing. This extends to cyberspace also. We've raised the most tech-savvy generation of kids. They're well-versed in using the internet, instant messaging, and social networking sites. Protecting your Teens children are increasingly with gaining gaming. access to the internet through their cell phones, and the majority says their parents are not aware of this activity. Cyberbullying is widespread, with over one-third of surveyed respondents knowing a friend who's engaged in it, or experienced it, or engaged in it themselves. About one in five teens have tried sexting, sending, receiving, or forwarding sexually suggestive, nude, or nearly nude photos through text message or email. And over a third know of a friend who sent or received these kinds of messages. Through the survey, we also found out what parents really know about children's online activities. About two in five teens say they tell their parents very little or nothing about what they do and where they go online. Only half of the respondents have been given limits or controls regarding the internet. And of those with restrictions, one in four has figured out some way of getting around parental Did you know that on average, kids are spending nearly 27 hours per week online? So what's the problem? I thought keeping up with technology was a good thing. Technology is a wonderful thing, but only when it's used safely. Arizona Attorney General Terry Goddard recently taught this important lesson to a group of students from Oslo. Why did she trust him? Because of the relationship over the internet, right? How many hours a day did she talk to this guy? Three to six hours a day. Did she tell any of her friends where she was going? I think you're right. It doesn't say in the movie, but I think you're right. She didn't tell him. So bottom line, she hadn't told anybody. How was anybody to know where she was? Do you think anybody knew? Did her parents know? No. no. Did her friends know? No. Okay. Now, I want to make one thing absolutely clear in the little bit of time we have. The message I have, the message this film has, is never, ever make a personal appointment with somebody that you only have met for the first time on the internet. This look like a nice guy right here? Here are some of his thoughts. He says, I like poetry, plants and flowers. My perfect night would be cuddling by the fireplace. Now, let me tell you who Danny really is. His name is Keith Wilkins. This is a mugshot. He is a registered sex offender. The bottom line is folks are not always how or what they appear a text message to somebody else. But they send it to a bunch of other people. Amen. Unfortunately, that is what happens. And now it's out for that 300 million that we talked about before. Now, how many of you are interested in going to college? I, I hope you all are. I hope you all do. Guess what admissions officers at ASU and at colleges and universities throughout this country do when they get your application? They're going to Google you on the Internet. Don't put something out on the internet you're going to be ashamed of in the future. Now, if you see a problem or you hear about something or somebody does something on the internet that you don't feel good about, what do you do about it? Tell your parents. Sometimes people see something and they just delete it or they forget about it. Please don't do that. Cyber harassment, cyber bullying. You're the only ones that are going to make a difference in stopping it. And the last point is went back to that AG website that I told you about. I hope you'll go to azag.gov and you'll look at some of the materials there and maybe you can even encourage your parents to do that. Now, let's meet two Arizona students and see how their safety smarts measure up. I like school because it's fun and I get to learn a lot and see all of my friends. Things I like to do to just play the PS3, get on the computer, text. The game I like to play the most is Call of Duty World at War. What's unique thing about it is you can play with other people and you can talk to them whether it's with a Bluetooth or whether it's writing them a message. Some of them I do know and some of them I get to know bef like before we start playing really. Some of them I don't know because there's over 100,000 people that play online. On my MySpace, my profile is set to private because I feel that only the people that I have as my friends should see what I have and see my photos. The rules, I, I don't use it too late at night and I don't use it too early in the morning because they want to make sure what we're doing isn't, isn't anything bad.
I learned that you gotta be careful about who you talk to on the internet or on a chat site. Make sure you get to know the person before they, you try to go meet them alone or somewhere. You gotta meet them in public. Because I'm involved in so much activities, I have a lot of friends. I get in touch with everybody by texting, phone, cell phones, internet, all that. I'll spend like an hour or two on the internet a day. I'm very careful about what I put on the internet and I just make sure everything's private and if I don't want people to see it, I'll make sure it's not there. Because I don't want people to find me or Google me or try to come get me or something. The Attorney General put up this story of a girl who met this guy or whatever on the internet and how um, he was a molester. That just kind of scared me because there's a lot of weirdos and perverts on the internet. I've changed my friends, I've deleted people I don't know, old, older people, people I don't talk to and I've changed some of the description on it, like how old I am, where I go to school, the things where I'm at all the time, my friends, all that, so nobody could find me or anything like that. My parents saw that a lot of people have been trying to talk to me and older people, so they want to keep a check on me so that I give them my password, because in, or anything I'm on, they have my password too. I know some kids don't agree with this, but your parents should know about stuff and they should know what you're doing, they should have your passwords and stuff like that to check up on you because you think that they're not, that they're just being mean or they're being rude or stupid and just want to have control when really they're just protecting you. They want to make sure you're okay and I understand that. I think other kids just understand that too. It seems like both of these young people have taken the right steps to be safe online. But does Terry Goddard think they've done anything that might jeopardize not only their safety but that of their friends and families as well? I got a sense of positive attitude, obviously very engaged on the web, and following some rules that looked like he'd worked out with his parents. The computer was in the living room, uh, the time of, of access was limited to no late night, no early morning, uh, so that says to me that there's a good dialogue about what he does and when he does it. Now, he also had a few uh, things he said that I, I would take exception to. For example, uh, I believe he said he had to be careful who you talk to, that's good, uh, but you need to be sure you know the person before you meet them. And I just think that makes a very fundamental mistake, and that is you never know the person you're talking to when the only contact is over the Internet. Um, they may say anything, and sometimes, and especially the predators, the ones you have to be most worried about, uh, lie. And they say things that are just not true. They pretend to be somebody you want to know, somebody that or deserves your trust, and it's all a fiction. And so the bottom line is you don't get to know them. And if you use what you learn on the Internet as the basis for a personal meeting, you're asking for trouble. I thought she was really had some good rules that, that she had imposed. Uh, first, she said she was careful. That's, that's a good way to start. Second, she didn't want to put any information, even though she had the privacy settings, she still didn't want to put any information on, even private, that somebody could use to track her down, to find where she lived, to find exactly who she was. So she was very, very careful. And I think that's a, a fundamental thing that, that everybody needs to, to watch. The other part that I thought was very good was she took a very active interest in her website. She said she went back. If she saw something that might lead somebody to her that was there by mistake, she changed it. And she also looked at her friends list, and if there was somebody she hadn't visited for a while or she really didn't know, she deleted them. And again, I think that, that was the right kind of, of using a dynamic approach to your friends list, to your web page, uh, always thinking about your own security. I really like what was said at the end about sharing her password with her parents. And she did it for the right reasons, uh, not because they wanted to snoop, but because she felt it was for her own protection. And I can't say strongly enough how important that is. There needs to be a dialogue between parents and young people who are using the computer because it is for their protection. Uh, there are things that parents might see that uh, a teenager was not aware of. And in addition, we've had so many tragic cases in law enforcement.